Hey guys, welcome back. So, our table here is obviously very dry. Uh, dried for quite a while. <laughs> um, we're going to now coat it with resin. So, we are using the Stone Coat Countertops uh, Epoxy. And this is what they use for the kitchen countertops. So, I wanted to use this because this is obviously not a piece of art. So we're not using the art coat, which is a different kind of resin. Um, this is made for use, you know, things will be set on it and whatnot. So um, the countertop epoxy is really like heat resistant, scratch resistant, etc. So I've already pre-mixed up the resin here and it is a 50-50 mixture just like the art coat. The thing with this resin too is you have a little bit less time to work with it than the art coat. Um, but that's okay. And we're just doing our flood coat here. So same thing um, like with the countertops and whatnot. I'm going to start in the middle there. And then I have this tool which I just got from um, Michaels I think it was. Uh, but Stone Coat Countertops also has some really good tools for this, for just chopping and moving the, the resin around. And this also helps to mix up the resin more as you go. So we just want to get um, the table thoroughly coated. Also an important point is make sure your surface is level before doing anything with resin. So, um, as you guys would know if you watched my earlier videos, my garage is not level, my garage floor. So, definitely had to level this table. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit more. You always leave a little bit in your cup just in case. So, um, and I did tape off all the sides, plus I put uh, a rise of tape around the sides um, just to make sure it doesn't go over the edges. Of course, I do have something protecting my floor just in case anyways. So I'm going to get this pushed almost to the edge with this. You can definitely push it to the edge, but then I'm going to get in there probably with just my hands, just to make sure I don't want it to go too much to the edge there. And then we're gonna get in here with our torch. So, and it is self-leveling in case anybody doesn't know that. So you'll see sections where there may be a little bit more. Um, obviously we don't wanna have any bare sections, but um, if if there is, oh, that one went all the way to the edge there. If there is a section where it has a lot, it will level out. Um, and then last important point too, is you don't wanna leave the tape on here until it dries. You wanna leave it on there until it's hardened, which is just after a couple hours or so, and then peel the tape off. So this will make it so that you don't have the tape resined to your surface. So just making sure that I get all the edges here. And I like to kind of check with my hand too, just to make sure that there's no spots that were really missed. This isn't a thick coat of resin, in case anyone's wondering. It's not super thick. This stuff is meant to be done in like eighth inch increments. So if you did want to put a thicker coat on there, you would let this dry and then put your second coat on. I will likely just be doing one on here though. All right, there we go. So that is covered. I'm going to go ahead and grab the torch and then we're going to get rid of any and all air bubbles and then, uh, you know, kind of just double check everything. All right. I don't have the world's greatest torch, but it does the trick. 
And a common question is, can you use a heat gun instead of a torch? Um, the answer is yes. It just uh, doesn't do as great a job or it'll just take longer. Um, and then another question is, can you not use a torch at all? And the answer to that one is no. If you do not torch this to get rid of the air bubbles, unlike an acrylic pour where the air bubbles will actually come out, um, the air bubbles will dry in the resin and you will be probably unhappy. <laughs> Unless you're going for air bubbles in your resin, but it will dry like that. In an acrylic pour, the air bubbles tend to pop themselves. Not so much in resin. So we just make sure. Now you don't want to torch one spot too much because you will light it on fire. And of course you don't want to light your tape on fire. Okay, I think that's good. And what I like to do too is I'll come back in probably a couple hours or so, maybe less, and I'll check on it if any you know, new air bubbles have maybe popped up or some that I missed. I'll go over it again real quick. Less than a couple hours, usually more like an hour. Um, and I'm going to just come back and keep checking on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to just come back when this is all dry. And I will show you guys the finished product. All right, so we're back. It's been about 24 hours, so you can see that nice gloss and also how it really brought that color back out. Sorry for the glare. That's always there, unfortunately. Um, some cool cells had developed while drying here. I forgot to show you guys earlier. Yeah, and I love that lightning effect, I think I'm going to call it, through there. So overall, I really like how it looks. Definitely love resin. Let me see if I can kind of get a bit of a closer up. There's a little better. I did not do perfectly around the edges, I'm not going to lie. I taped them off the best I could, but you know, and we'll see. I'm not sure what we're going to be doing with the rest of the table anyways. If we'll leave it like that or whatever, I'll let my husband decide on that because <laughs> it is his table. So there you guys go. I hope you enjoyed this. Do not forget to subscribe and we will see you next time.